The main reason that we're replacing our brake lines is the factory lines are a rubber line, which works in an OEM application, but in, in our off-road environment, we're pushing it pretty hard and we're stretching our suspension. So we get brake lines that have, where they're stretched out because of the truck at full travel. And it starts putting a lot of stress, like in this back area of the brake line, that can start to crack. In this application, this is a truck that has a standard three inch lift, nothing extreme. And these brake lines are getting stretched and pulled because they're just, they're the stock ones. They're just not long enough. They need to have a little more length to them. And that's where our longer steel braided lines come in. And so these are custom made. So Metal Tech actually has these made here in the United States. And these are made specifically for this application. Nothing else. This is made just for these trucks. To start with it, you're going to want to have some specific tools that are very helpful for doing brake lines. The main thing that you're going to need, because we're doing Toyota brake lines, is going to be you need to have a 10 millimeter line wrench. And that's something that if you don't have, you should go get if you're going to do this job. Let's go and get into it and swap these things out. On the back of the truck, we're going to be replacing this line and this line. And the replacement points are going to be up here. So this is part of the line and this is part of the truck. Line, line, truck. And the same thing down below. Um, we have the line and then we have the truck. And these are the flange or the flare nuts that are on the ends of the hard brake lines. And we don't want to hurt these. So that's why we're going to use a flange wrench on these or a line wrench that's made for it. And then we're going to use another wrench to support the brake line so that this does not start to twist the hard line. We don't want to twist the hard line. Uh, we just want to back this flare net out, back the flare net out and off, and then do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to support by grabbing hold of the, the body of the uh, brake line. And the brake lines have little wrench flats on them, but sometimes they're kind of difficult to get to. So like in this case, the wrench flats have to be perfectly up and down this way for me to use them. And it's going to be a little difficult. Well, I did get the wrench on there. So the wrench is on there. I can get the wrench on there using the wrench flats. The other way around that, if you can't get on the wrench flats, is to come in with a pair of vice grips. But since I can get that on there, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that flat being available to me. And put this on. Make sure I'm on it. And I am on that. I'm fully supporting it. Now I'm going to take my line wrench, and there's my 10 millimeter line wrench. And I'm going to come down here, and you can see how, why it's called a line wrench. It's designed to slide right over that line and go up and go onto the shoulders of the flare net. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and start to crack this open. And it, it'll be firm at first, but once I get it to move, then, it, then it's fine, like any kind of nut. There we go. So that's broken free. Now I can just easily rotate this and it's gonna start dribbling out brake fluid. And you can see it's starting to come out now. So now this flare net slides, slides down and it's free. And that hard line is just sitting up in there. So now I'm gonna now do the lower one as this continues to, to leak out, which is fine. So this brake line now can actually just pop right out. See, it just goes in there. It's got this little flared end on it, which plugs into a special flared end inside there. If you look inside, you can see the, the end is perfectly flared, which is gonna allow this to go into it and engage. So again, it's important that when you change these that you support this body, that you don't just get up here and start, start tightening or loosening that, that flange nut. Because if you don't support the body, the whole thing can twist and it can actually twist the metal up above. We don't want to do that. So that comes up, that's off, that's good. And that can come out and off to the side. Now I'm going to do this next one. Now this next one's a good example of where that wrench flange are kind of hard to get to. I mean, maybe I can come in behind the filler, the gas filler line, I guess, maybe. Let's see if I can get that on there. Nah, it's not going to cleanly get on there. So this will be an example of where I'm going to go ahead and use the vice grips. And just grab the body of the sucker. All I got to do is crack it loose. And you notice we're not dripping a ton of brake fluid from the top. That's because we started at the bottom. And the bottom let those lines drain out. So now we can go ahead and remove the brake lines themselves, the soft lines. I'm going to push the hard lines away. And to remove the, the brake lines, they're held on with little brake line clips. And the clips are these things right here. And essentially, it's a 
wafer clip, like this one, that's going to slide in and it helps hold this in place and traps it on there. It's like a little spring clip. So we're going to pull the stock one off with some vice grips. And they have these little flanges that are upright on them. And we're just going to get a hold of this thing and just wiggle it and pull it out. There it is, a little spring clip, came right off. And now the spring clip is out, the brake line is going to come right out. Now we're ready to change this brake line. So I'll go ahead and do the bottom and that whole line is going to come out. I have one brake line out. I'm going to do the next brake line at this point and then we'll be ready to start putting the new ones in. All right, so your brake lines are going to mount on the brackets and there's special holes in each bracket for each one. One set of holes is slightly bigger than the other. And so when you put these in here, you need to make sure that the back of the bracket, this part back here, fits flush against the bottom of the bracket. And the other part sticking completely through the hole so you can put your spring clip through the, the, the top support piece. On a lot of the Toyotas, one is, big, one is bigger diameter than the other one. In this particular case, the head uh, here that looks smaller actually has the bigger diameter, the flange diameter, and the one that looks bigger actually has the smaller flange diameter. And on the Toyota, the top uses the small flange and the bottom goes to, uh, has the big flange. So I'm gonna put the small flange in first and these have been stored in a bag and they kind of naturally sit like this. So I'm gonna support that and I'm gonna put it on so that this is gonna do this so I'm clearing the fuel tank. So I'm gonna put this up here and I'm gonna put the spring clip in. Now with brake lines, super important, you don't cross thread these things. When these ship, we've already QC'd all of them to make sure the threads are correct. It's really easy to cross thread. So just take the time to make sure you're, you're threading it in correctly. Um, if you do cross thread them, uh, you just have to replace the entire brake, brake line. Uh, so just take a, take a moment to make sure that you're getting the threads in correctly. Don't just start jamming them in there. Yeah. I wish, oh, you, maybe you got that on video. Because that thing just went right in. Where'd the click? All right, so we're putting this baby in. I'm going to put the nipple in. I'm going to seat it. Once it's seated, I'm going to slide the flange nut up and I'm going to be careful that the flange nut is grabbing the threads correctly, not cross threading. So I'm just snugging these up. I'm not tightening them down. When I go to tighten, we're going to support the back of these with the proper wrench. But right now they're just snugging them down just so we stop dripping. So the tip of the line has this nipple on it and there's a seat inside the receiver. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to feel for it to hit. So right there, it's perfectly sitting on it right now. That means I'm straight up and down. Now when I bring the nut down, it's going to, I can start spinning the nut and I can feel it right away start to thread correctly and have proper thread engagement. All right, so I'm ready to start snugging this down. I'm being careful that I'm not over torquing it because I don't have a supporting wrench on that. So now I can go ahead and put my supporting wrench on. Now I'm supporting the soft line and I'm on the flange nut. Now I'm able to go ahead and snug the flange nut down. So we just completed that and that one's good. And I can do the other one and we'll do the bottom and we'll be done. So now we got brake fluid all over everything, including the floor. It's okay. But we are gonna go in and clean this off and get the brake fluid off. And what I do is I just come in with, with degreaser and spray the whole area down and wipe it down the best I can with some rags. So you could use glass cleaner, whatever you got for that's reasonable to use on your vehicle, simple green, whatever. I got some industrial uh, purple stuff that we use in the shop. We just get, we just use it in a weed sprayer because we are constantly degreasing stuff. At this point, I'm gonna wipe it down and clean it up. And then we're gonna be ready to go ahead and add brake fluid into the master cylinder. And then we'll bleed the brakes and then we're going to be checking for leaks. So right now I'm just cleaning it up and then we'll do the bleed and then we'll be done.